division in France. Um, so we're very excited about uh, Isaiah. Um, and then with 54, there's a lot of moving around in 54. Um, typically, this is not something that uh, we do, but we did end up selling 54 for an amount that uh, I don't think it's appropriate to disclose, but uh, well, I think we did pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so I'm happy to answer whatever questions you have. Uh, when you, never mind, I can't phrase it that way. <laughs> was the, was the was the idea in the second round to get players or or some more players like Isaiah where you could develop? Yeah, so I think roster spots are something we're always managing, um, and it was certainly something that we looked at this season. When we look at our current roster, um, you know, we very quickly get to ten or eleven players. You add. Um, be at one or maybe two players in the first round, and you get to 12, 13, and very quickly the roster starts to fill up, and there's certainly positional needs that we're going to have to address, be it through trade uh, or free agency. Um, and so uh, I think in the second round, we did explore opportunities to move up. Uh, we explored certainly opportunities to move back. Uh, and at the but all of that was going to be for, for, for candidates who were willing to play internationally and to continue to play overseas. So I do think it's likely that Isaiah will end up playing internationally. Um, but I think there's actually a pretty good chance he might go to play summer league for us, which would be nice. Um, so, you know, we explored a lot of options, but uh, it's one of those, I think it's one of those um, challenges that everybody's faced with managing a roster. Um, and so we certainly went to the second round with a strategy as to identify players who we believed could get into a program internationally. Um, and this, as, as most of you know, is something that we've done here a number of times. Um, we hope, you know, we believe it's an important part of our program. Can you, can you speak generally on the draft as a whole on how it sets you up going into free agents? Or are we not there yet? Yeah, I think our draft strategy is many times the same. Is you know our, we're trying to draft the best player, regardless of position, over the life of their career, who fit within our core characteristics, um, and we feel good about what we've been able to do over the last couple of days. Um, and you know I, I, I will say Kent Bazemore is absolutely a Hawks priority. Um, we uh, we love Kent. Um, he's a huge part of what we do, um, and. Uh, I don't think there should be any confusion as to how important Kent is to us. Follow that up, I mean, you stated from the beginning, even during the season, that Horford and Bays would be the top two priorities. I and mean, I guess it goes without saying, Al will be top of the list priority when free agency begins? Yes, certainly. So obviously you, you recognize the fact that he is going to be sought after uh, by a lot of teams. Knowing what you have to offer, knowing comfortability, how shocked would you be if that doesn't go in your favor? You know, with uh, I think we we are very. First of all, we're we're so fortunate to to work with a guy and with the character of Al Horford. Um, we also uh, believe in the quality of our relationships that we have built over the years. At the same time, we always respect a player's a right to choose. Um, especially as an unrestricted free agent. Um, but Al has been, is, and will be a priority for the Hawks. And um, I think we feel very good about it. Is it, a, is it safe to say that wing depth overall was a priority coming into this? Or is that how your draft board unfolded? Yeah, you know, it was kind of the draft a little bit. Uh, we certainly targeted, there was a number of players at different positions that we targeted that just didn't break our way. Or maybe we had, you know, maybe we had these wings, you know, ranked higher than um, how it ultimately played out. Um, you know, I think we've said this. It, it, in our view, is it was kind of a deep mid-rotation player draft, um, and uh, you know, it's all, we're always thinking about um, how players may fit together, because that's kind of the, what the way the Hawks play. We, we just try to make sure that we're putting five guys on the court that uh, 
you know, that just complement one another. And so when we went into this draft, um, we were very aware of that. And uh, ultimately, when we're done, we think we're going to have, uh, you know, have picked, picked the guys that, that, that fit one another and complement not only each other, but the system well. Just in case the uh, Oakland point guard ends up being a name that we're talking about in a few years, yeah. how difficult was that decision? Obviously, a fan might look at yeah. what he did in the combine, 44-inch vertical, yeah, no. and the numbers he put up, and yeah. think, why would they sell rights to this guy? Yeah, fantastic year, a uh, very good player. Uh, I think great, not good athlete. Um, I would just share that it it's, truly comes down to roster spots and our inability to make sure that 54 was going to be on the roster. And so it's not about whether or not we thought the player was a, you know, a fit or not. It really was a decision based upon roster management. And ultimately, that's, that's why we made the decision we made. It's like it's kind of a moot point, this, and I know it's it happened in the past, and you can't say he's not here anymore. But Jeff Teague had the Instagram post saying that he played last year injured, and almost implied that you guys, when he said he used a the hashtag, they won't tell you that. I'm curious, what was the extent of that injury? What was the extent of your knowledge of that injury that he was referring to? Yeah, I appreciate the question. Um, I think tonight is, our, you know, our intent is to focus on the draft. Um, and uh, and I just don't think it's appropriate for me to, to comment any further. Uh, as far as the draft overall, how would you grade yourselves? I mean, obviously there's other things you can't <laughs> label. I'm curious about. One of the things I think is is, is um, let's uh, one of the things I think is fascinating about the draft is this draft grade. Um, and I'm certainly not going to ever grade myself. Uh, you know, we're always looking for opportunities. <laughs> to learn um, and grow and improve and study past drafts. Uh, at the same time, we're confident in the work that we've done and the time that we've put into this. I think it's important that I pause and mention the work that was done by John Trelor, our Director of Player Personnel, Jeff Peterson, our Assistant General Manager, Mike McNeve, our, our, our Director of Basketball Operations, um, Donko, our International Scout, our assistant coaches for the work they were done, they've done, they did and have done. Matt Elijah, Daniel, uh, Michael Blackstone, so many people have put countless hours to pull this off. And and you know draft grades and I certainly respect how much fans love and and, and read um, those. Uh, I don't even know what they are, right? Those posts. But uh, you know our focus is just on the work. You know, just trying to identify the best players who fit for us and then get them into our program. And I'd also say this is the beginning for us. You know, we view this as the beginning of the next step and the transition into their careers. Um, and oftentimes it seems like the draft is the end and then, we, you know, we're kind of done. And, and, and that's not our view. So. Is there any chance that Virginia does a step up in competition if he stays overseas? Yeah, so I just had a conversation with his agent, um, and I believe there's already a club that he's potentially working with, um, but I, I don't exactly know those details yet, but certainly that would be our hope. I, I, I'm excited. He's from just, I believe, uh, just outside of Monaco, so you know, any chance you get to go <laughs> south of France, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a perk of the job. So, All right. Thank Guys, you thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you for being patient.